to Math with Jen. In this video, we are going to represent a fraction a over b as a sum of fractions 1 over b, where a and b are whole numbers, b is greater than 0, including when a is greater than b. Let's talk about what each of these parts mean. And don't freak out yet. Don't leave. We're going to talk about what these letters are standing for in the standard. So in the standard, they're using letters because you're not just going to be looking at one single fraction. You're going to be looking at different fractions. So the A is representing the numerators that you're going to be looking at. So the numerators for grade four, it can be anything including being greater than the denominator. In grade three, we looked at fractions that were less than a whole. So that meant that A had to be less than B. But in grade four, you're now going to be looking at what happens when that numerator is greater than the denominator. We're going to be looking at both when the numerator is less than the denominator and when the numerator is greater than the denominator. So the unit fraction, it's just saying that you're going to have one of those parts out of whatever you're talking about, whatever that denominator is going to be. And then B, the denominator has to be greater than zero. There's no way we could build a fraction of a number without it being greater than zero. I have one rectangle, okay, and my whole is going to be one rectangle, and it is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. Denominator is eight. Denominator tells you how many parts you need to make a whole. The numerator is telling us how much we have. What are we looking at? What part of that whole are we looking at? Unit fraction represents one of those equal parts that we need to make a whole. That one over b in this case would be one over eight. We need eight of these parts of these unit fractions to make one whole. So in our example, in our standard, when it said a over B. So in this case, I'm talking about the eight over eight. Okay, I'm talking about the whole thing. Right now we're looking at the whole rectangle. So the whole rectangle, I have eight parts out of the eight that I need to make a whole. And then the one over B is our unit fraction. So this is my unit fraction, one eighth. So here's my sum, my sum of unit fractions to make that fraction. In this case, I had A equal B. The numerator was the same as the denominator. And for this example, we're going to look at the fraction 6 eighths. So I have six of the parts I need to make a whole. So in order to get the 6 eighths, I need one, two, three, four, five, six of those eighths. The sum of 6 one eighths would give me 6 eighths. We're now going to look at when the numerator is greater than the denominator. A dime. A dime represents that I need 10 dimes to make a whole. Because remember the denominator is how many do you need of those equal parts to make a whole? 10 dimes to make one whole, to make one dollar. I have 12 dimes, so my numerator is going to be 12. The numerator is how many of those equal parts you have. The denominator is how many of those equal parts make one whole. My numerator is larger than my denominator, so that tells me that I have more than one whole. I have more than a dollar. Okay, the unit fraction in this example is one tenth. Write the sum of unit fractions for 12 tenths. I'm going to write one tenth 12 times. So 12 tenths as a sum of unit fractions. We are going to do two examples together where we write the fraction that's given into sum of unit fractions. For this first one, we have seven fifths. The sum would be one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth seven times. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those equal parts. One fifth is representing the unit fraction, each of those parts I needed. So if I have one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth, that's already a whole, right? Because I only needed five equal parts. But then I have two more of those fifths. 
So that's why the numerator is larger than the denominator. But writing it as a sum of unit fractions, you would have one fifth, which is the unit fraction written seven times. This example, we have our unit fraction is one half, eight halves. I would need eight unit fractions. The eight is saying that we have eight of those parts. Each of those parts are being represented by the unit fraction, one half. I have eight of those. So I have eight one halves to make eight halves. That is the standard of representing a fraction as a sum of unit fractions. I thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I hope that you learned something new. See you next time. Bye.